Oh, there's the problem. The green paint wore off. No wonder it broke. That's a shame. Hey everyone, real quick. If you haven't already, please hit the like button, share this video on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or whatever social media platform you use, and hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Those are the three biggest things you can do to help our channel grow and to support our channel. That brings me to my next thing. A lot of people have been asking about how they can support us. And while we appreciate the offer to give monetary donations, we just don't accept them. What you can do instead is there's a link down below in the description. That link will take you to Farm Focus website that has our Freedom Farms merchandise on it. All of our apparel on there is 100% made in the USA. The shirt is made here, the decals are made here, and then they're put on the shirts all here in the United States. There's also decals on there and shortly there'll be sweatshirts. So if you're interested in that stuff, please go check out Farm Focus website. The link is down below in the description. It'll take you straight to our shop. Thank you and enjoy the videos. Well, hello everyone. It has been a busy week and hay season is literally like we're trying to cut hay next week. Only one problem with it. I know it probably didn't help when I'm shaking the camera, but you can probably hear the noise. Shouldn't have that noise. So if something's going on in the slip clutch. I'm gonna take it apart real quick and see if I can figure out if there's a bearing bad or maybe a U-joint. Either way, something's not right. So let's dig into it. So upon further inspection, this is actually not my issue. Everything's good and tight in here. The throwouts, so like whenever I spin it fast like that, it's got, no, I, should, I can take it apart real quick to show you. It'll be easier. So these right here are throwouts. And how they work is actually really simple. So these, once you get going, or once the RPMs come up fast enough, these swing out, not that far, but they swing out far enough that they engage this lip, one of those lips right there, and that's what holds the pressure against it. And if, uh, if there was play in here, there's bearings inside of here, and there's also bearings on there that ride on the shaft. And that was kind of my first guess because this takes most of the abuse. So what a slip clutch does, which this is the slip clutch portion right here, basically put tension on it. If it hits something that is uh, solid, the slip clutch is supposed to slip and take the pressure off of the, in this case, the turtles, the mower heads. I'll show you back here. So it'll take the pressure off of these turtles. So like if you hit a rock or something like that and lessen the chance of the gears in here being damaged. And last year we actually, I did some damage to one of them, not on purpose obviously, but nonetheless it did happen. And uh, once, uh, basically it broke two teeth off of this one right here. Um, so two teeth off of the gear that's right here. There's pins that you probably can't see. So here's one of the pins. I'm gonna you see from the bottom. There's one pin right there and one pin right there. This is the other reason that we inspect everything because as you can see, this moves back and forth and it shouldn't be like that and the weirder part is is that oh you know what? i forgot um, somebody used it after i checked everything 
But that's all right. We'll, we'll look through here real quick. I've got extras. We'll tighten those up. No big deal. All the other ones look like they're all in good shape. I'm pretty sure this So, it looks like my issue is actually that the race is worn down, or sorry, not worn, um, got pushed forward, or it's missing a piece of it. It's kind of hard to say right now. Problem with a messing with a race is that if you damage it, the bearing will not ride on it because it has to be perfectly smooth and no debris or anything else in there. So, but the bearing itself is actually fine. And you can hold it right here. It spins. I mean, it should spin easier, so we're going to replace it. But the bearing actually wasn't the failure. It looks like the... Oh, it's a good magnet. It looks like the failure point was actually the... Uh, the race so we're gonna have to go get parts for that tomorrow and everything's closed already but what we can do right now is this so, right. keep all my parts in here they're there you guys are crooked now. There we go. So this is the piece that's missing down below. And this is the bolt that's missing up above. And this is the piece that goes in. How this works is it's essentially a sandwich. These will go in there just like so. So this one goes through like that. This bolt will go through in here and it threads into the bottom one and then pulls it up tight against the, uh, this t or the, sorry, squishes them down tight. And these act as the race for the bearing that's in there for those gears. So without that in there, it's very easy for them gears to cause problems and um, well, essentially destroy themselves. We don't want that to happen. So this is what we're gonna do. Uh, it's got a lot of debris in it. We're going to take one of these, we'll go clean it up real quick, and then we will throw it in. Good deal. We're actually going to go ahead and put these others together so we know how many we got. We got two extra. We don't worry too much about the O-rings. I'll show it to you here in a second, though. We don't worry too much about these O-rings because, as you can see, this one's a little dried up. It's just as easy to throw a little bit of RTV on there and, and be done with it. Or if you get more washers, throw in this little container, too. Uh, we actually get most of our used parts for this from Two Cylinder Plus. Um, we're not sponsored by them or anything like that. Uh, they have a bunch of old John Deere, well, older John Deere equipment, I suppose. You say. Um, and basically, there's salvage yard for them. So if you have older John Deere equipment and you're in the Lebanon, Missouri area, um, you can go there. They have a lot of stuff for you and about half the price of buying something from the dealer. All right, so I cleaned this up with an emery cloth and WD-40, so it's good and smooth now. I also cleaned the threads out so that this threads in very easily. So now, all I gotta do, I got my RTV sealant right here. 
I'll put this in and I'll show you guys. I put a little bead of uh, RTV around this lip and then again around this lip and then we put them together and they'll hold the oil in. All right, we will clean this out real quick. It's got a little bit of debris in there, but not, not a lot. Puppies are having a little disagreement, I guess. And it actually looks like the top piece was already in there. It never came out. It was just the bottom half that had come out. like so but before we do that let's put this in from the top and try to push out any little debris that might still be in that hole Make it a little more difficult. We gotta remove this turtle head first. Let me bring you guys back up top. In case you're wondering, that is not how this should look. It should actually be smooth, just like the rest of it. The previous owners hit something. I don't know what it was, but at the end of the day. It's solid enough for what we're doing, so we weren't too concerned. But what we do need to do here, I gotta remove this turtle head right here. Now, these turtle heads, as you can see, they are all clocked so that they're at 90 degrees from each other. If you have them off from that, they're gonna hit each other and they'll be, they'll make, they'll have interference. You don't want that. Let's take them off real quick. Touching it, it has a little bit of play, but none of the others do. So, and that might be why. Much better. This is why we check things. Exactly why. I don't want to be a doomsday or anything like that. But farm equipment is incredibly dangerous. These turtles spin, I honestly don't know the exact speed, but they spin fast. Um, you know, faster than your lawnmower blades fast. The thing is, is if one of these comes off, you know, with that kind of rotation to it, what's it going to do when it hits the other one? I have no idea. All I know is I don't want to rely on this little thin piece of rubber to protect me. And then to top that off, you know, not only can it hurt somebody else, but now I'm going to lose a lot of money trying to repair it. 
you know, it's a lot easier just to catch things now before using them. That's why we, once I get the bearing in there, we'll fire it up. We will not test it uh, on grab per se, but what we will do is we'll test it, um, you know, under no load. And just check and make sure that nothing is wobbling, nothing has excessive play. These are just things, well, the bearing, for instance, and the slip clutch is just something that I thought about from last year because, like I said, I had a rock that I hit that did a lot of damage to the um, to these gears. About $700 of used parts. So if I were to buy new parts, it would have been almost $1,400. Yeah, much, much better. I like that. And then we still have this extra piece. We'll put it up there so we don't lose it. But um, these are things that, that we watch, though. This is very important. Like I said, these pieces move incredibly fast, and they can do a lot of damage to somebody. Um, somebody that's standing nearby or somebody that's in the tractor. Because, like I said, this little, these little rubber pieces here, they're not going to stop it. It's, I can't imagine it's going to stop it anyway. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but. All right. So the shaft in here, this has worn. Uh, you can probably see it better there. So see how it's not the same diameter from here to there. That's not okay. So we're going to pull that shaft and replace it. We got a new one. Well, a new used one. Remember that time that Grandpa's bench bike saved the day? <sighs> Been a lot of times that happened. Um, fun story about that bench vice. You guys saw a picture of it probably a week or so ago of it on uh, YouTube on the community post. That actually was my grandpa's. Um, but that vice is actually broken and, and been broken forever. Believe it or not, I'm actually the one that broke it. I don't remember how old I was or anything, but um, I was crushing something or putting something in the vise and crushing it. You know how kids are, and uh, got smart, you know, because I was a smaller person then still, but I was strong. And I was like, well, you know, if I put a bar on there, I, you know, on the end of the the handle on the vise, I'll be able to, you know crank it down harder and sure enough I did and then I broke it but just a fun story I know that the lens is very dirty. It's got a little WD-40 on it. Anyway, everything's back together. New shaft is in. The old shaft, this is where our issue was. There was a bearing apparently that seized up at some point and it wore this down. Um, pulled the bearing off the front. That bearing was still good. We put it back on. Put this bearing, uh, the new bearing we got back on. What was wrong with it was it was missing. Well, the bearing was actually okay. But we went ahead and just got a, another one because it had, this one turns, oops, right, this one turns okay, but you can tell that it's definitely got some dirt and debris in there probably that's slowing it down because it doesn't turn as easy. Like see how it turns the outside of the bearing with it. Anyways, the other one's in better shape. What happened on this one was the collar, look at that. Oh, 
on the car. Switch this. All right, that goes here. See on this, this has got a lip on it. And that lip is designed to take a collar such as this one. It's a weird bearing because if you look at it, this part of the bearing is very thin, right? That lip is much thinner than the bottom part. It gets bigger as it goes around. It's designed like that because this collar right here will make it to where if it didn't, if it wasn't missing the piece on the top, it broke off. It's basically designed to set this on here and then you twist it. And as you twist it, it'll make it to where that offset is pushed tight against the bearing. It's a weird design, but it's how it was designed by Kuhn. And I mean, it works good. This, this is actually, uh, I don't know what, how old that bearing is, but that bearing that we just put on there was actually a, an original one that came on the Kuhn mower or on the John Deere. It's really a Kuhn mower, but anyway. Okay. I gotta hurry, dinner's done. But I'm, put, I'm slapping this on real quick. The, it doesn't seem that bad because I've got another one here. I got a newer one or one that was supposed to be in better condition and it has about the same amount of play. That one actually has something broke on it, but this actually still has not that much play in it. So I'm pretty sure most of that play was coming from up here that I could feel after I took the shaft off, I could kind of see it better. But let's throw this together real quick so I can go eat. I don't want to get in trouble. All right, well, everyone, that's going to do it for this uh, video. Everything's back together. They, uh, we'll do, well, I'll be doing some testing here, hopefully in the next day or so. And we should be good, though. I don't see a reason we won't be. The only thing that uh, is still needs to be, or that still needs to be serviced is the neighbor's hay rake. I haven't grabbed it yet, but it's pretty simple. Just do, do a little greasing, and it's usually good to go. The baler we took care of last fall, so I don't have to worry about it at all. So that's kind of nice. The only thing I worry about on it is the belts, because there's a couple that are stretched out that, that might cause problems. They caused a little bit of issue last year, but not enough that... I replaced them. I'm not trying to replace the belts on the baler because they're about, about $140 each. And our neighbor has the uh, kit where you can shorten your belts. I may end up having to do that, but I just don't want to buy new ones because $140 each, there's six belts. I want to put that money towards a new baler. Not brand new, but new to me. I'd like to have net wrap is what I'd really like to have. But even if I had a newer one that just had hydraulic pressure so I can make tighter bales, that would be appreciated. But anyways, that's it. Uh, have a blessed week, and we'll see you next time. If you have play like that, that's not good. But it looks like the bearing is actually good, and this is very loose. I can move it by hand. So I'm going to take this cotter pin out. We're going to tighten that nut. This is what led me to believe that the pet, that the bearing wasn't bad. And it's simply this right here. So you can see all the greases in there and the grease is the color it should be. It's a, you know, obviously it's older grease. We'll repack them after we cut. <clears throat> but my point is, is that if the bearing was bad, it'd be very easy to indicate because you'd have a lot of silver shavings, basically metal shavings all around in here. And that'd be very obvious to you. So the first thing I checked was just to touch the nut and see if it was loose, and sure enough, it was. So we're tightened back up now. No play in there. That's what we want. So what we're going to do now, clean up our tools and go cut. So that's going to finish the maintenance video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And if you're cutting hay, I hope it's going well for you. So thanks for watching. Have a blessed week, and we'll see you next time. If you like our video, press the like button. And you can even share it with your friends. And if you have any questions, comment down below. And if you like the channel, subscribe to the channel. Finally!